I can only see what could be described as Pluto. Sounds really weird. I know, stay with me. <laughs> and welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I would chat you through exactly what I can and can't see as a blind woman. This is something that is really fascinating to me because my vision has changed so much since I updated you in the past two years. It's just, it's just so different. I can't see nearly as much as I used to be able to see. So let's get on with this description. Disclaimer, I am just one blind woman on this crazy planet we live on. So every person that is registered blind doesn't necessarily have the same symptoms of their condition as mine. I would really stress that because it's often the case that if you are registered blind, you never really see completely like pitch black, nothing. Um, a lot of the people that I talk to definitely see some light because their brain is trying to, um, you know, comprehend what their eyes are seeing and there's often flashing lights and fireworks. Often doctors and clinical professionals often measure blindness with it being three over 60, which means what the blind person can see at three meters, a sighted person without any eye problems can see at 60 meters away with full visual acuity. So yeah within those three meters there's a massive spectrum and i just think the community is so amazing that there's all these different conditions and and ways of experiencing blindness that i would never be able to really know about or think about they might see different shapes to me or um, lights and they might have different sensitivities to different things so it's really interesting for me to just chat to new people about their conditions. So for me then, if we were to say that maybe a hundred blind people were in a room, I would tend to be maybe the bottom 2% of the people who are in that room. I only really see light on my really good days. And that sounds really weird because you think, oh, if you can see light, surely you can see light all the time. Not anymore, I used to be able to see a lot of colours and shapes and a bit of light when I first lost my vision at age 17. Now I get a lot of chronic migraines, I would say 15 out of the 31 days of the month. I have some pain at the back of my head or on the top of my um, skull or near my eye. Um, it's just something that I'm currently trying to manage and really navigate with the doctors. Maybe eventually I will end up at a chronic pain clinic. Um, I think I'm going that way, to be honest, Queens. It's just something that comes with my condition and it's just something that's a part of my life now and has been probably majorly for the past year, this, this pain that I have in my brain, <laughs> pain in the brain because I'm not seeing as much light anymore, I'm starting to struggle with my sleeping pattern. I think my circadian rhythm is kind of off whack a little bit sometimes and I'm just trying to navigate how to try and uh, match maybe just chronic pain management versus being able to sleep all through the night because I'm waking up in the middle of the night ravenous for some sort of sandwich. I'm like, what is the time? What is it? And I'm, yeah, it's just a bit weird for me at the moment. So I'm trying to navigate that. My best friend as well, David Howard, who has been on my channel a few times, I will link some of the videos we've done together in the description box, but he's amazing. He's a lighting designer and he came round to mine the other week and we were just looking at some lights um, in my office and he was getting these big bulbs and we were trying to work out whether I can still see light and what colours I can still see. And on that day, I was having a really good day. So I was like, Dave, Davey Howe, let's get in my room and let's try and see what this last left eye can really see. And we shone so many colors in my eye. After a while, I was a bit startled, but I really wanted to do this experiment with him. And eventually we found out that blue and red were sort of still comprehensible for me, even though they're really dull. 
he really had to shine the light and I really had to get quite close to it on a good day. Um, but yeah, I think my brain's getting a bit confused with all the different colours now. That experiment with Dave actually prompted me to do this video because I thought, wow, if Dave doesn't know what I can see, you know, Ollie might not know or, you know, my sister might not know and then equally you guys might not know and I sometimes don't check up on myself and and really just evaluate what I can see because day to day I don't use my vision at all. It's something that I don't need anymore to function. You know, I've got all this technology and I, I don't need it. So I forget about what's in front of me sometimes. And that sounds really weird because I have all of these flashing lights and everything, but I do just block them out because I'm doing stuff in the day. I'm thinking about them now so I can really see them. But yeah, it's, it's quite weird how it works, the brain. I think it's fascinating. So in a nutshell, what can I see? I have no vision at all in my right eye and I haven't since age 11 when I lost that one. That queen has been gone for a very long time. She doesn't see anything. It's literally complete and utter darkness in that eye. And my left eye, um, at age 17, I actually went blind in. I can still see a little bit. So what the consultant did when he was trying to save my vision in that operation in that March, he was cutting away bits of my retina to try and save the last remaining bits that I had. Which means half of my eye is completely black, pitch black, because he cut it off to save the other half. So I think it was the bottom half he cut off, which means in brain terms, because your brain flips the image over, it means that the top of my eye, the top half, horizontal quadrant, if you like, is dark. Nothing's there, gone. Queen went a long time ago. So we're looking at the bottom half of my eye. Now that has its problems. And when I first lost my vision, I could see a bit out of there. I used to be able to see when people held their fingers up right in front of me. Um, now I can't do that because I have a condition which means that my eye is constantly bleeding at the back. It means that my retina is constantly, constantly trying to pop off. And because of the bleeding, it, it is just putting strain on it. And what the consultant did is put a silicon bubble in my eye to fix down my retina, almost like wallpaper paste to stick it on. But if you imagine my little glue of the wallpaper keeps bleeding, so it wants to pop off, even with that silicon bubble in there. That type of retinal surgery is really common, this silicon oil in your eye, but usually around six months later after your surgery, they take the silicon oil out. But with me, because I literally have no vision and it is the thing that is keeping my retina to the back of my eye completely, it needs to stay on. But that's why I go to the eye hospital every year for them to monitor my pressures because they could go up and down because I've got this, um, for an object, if you like, in the back of my eye. It started to hurt a lot more recently. I don't know what's going on. We're still trying to navigate that, Queens. But we're looking at the bottom quadrant and in the middle of my eye, I can only see what could be described as Pluto. <laughs> Sounds really weird. I know, stay with me. But that is my macula trying to cling on for dear life, bless its cotton socks. Um, and that's kind of like got crater, it looks like there's loads of craters in it because I think it's just my cells maybe just really trying to stick themselves back on. But it's not working, I can't see through it. I think that's where I sort of develop my fear of holes. I really do have a fear of holes. It's not good. If we're splitting the bottom half now into quarters, the right quarter that I see out of, because I've got loads of scar tissue there, I'm constantly trying to see through that scar tissue and I really can't. I think it's just got so much scarring now over the past seven or nearly eight years now since I've had my operation. It's just, I can't see out of it. And I think it's trying to migrate over to the last bottom quarter quadrant, which is what I've always seen the most out of that quarter quadrant. Um, but it, it, it will go over time because I think my 
there will never be a time where my eyes don't bleed. They will just bleed and bleed and bleed, I think, until my retina pops off completely, even with the silicone oil in there. Um, I'm definitely not seeing as much light, so I think it's going that way. I'm not upset when I say that I will eventually lose my light perception because I have come to terms with it. And I think if you're watching this and you're first of all starting out in your sight loss journey, it is scary. And I still have days where I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, this is crazy. Um, I've had such a loss and there's still quite a lot of, you know, trauma in a way associated with that day that I lost my vision because it is something crazy massive um, to happen to, to a person when they had almost adult vision um, hours later and then they suddenly woke up and thought, oh, I've had surgery, it should be okay. And then the, co the consultant's coming in on Saturday in his jeans and he's staring at you and he's going, how many fingers am I holding up? And that is always going to be shocking. I have had years to process this and I would say time is the best medicine for grief. I still have a counsellor that I chat to, she's amazing and I know that I'm going to have those sad days and I don't hide from them. I think it's really important to, to keep tabs with yourself and my computer's talking. What are you doing Queen? So to conclude, I am constantly trying to see through a black quality street wrapper because the scar tissue is sort of migrating and it's almost like murky water, quality street wrapper, dark. It's all dark in here and it will get darker and darker because of that scar tissue. And there's no current cure for my eye condition. I think it would be weird now to get a cure tomorrow. I, I don't often think about, oh, what if, or uh, maybe someday, or, you know, I don't think like that just purely because for my mental health I've got to live and love every single day that I live and not focus on you know what I hope can happen or what maybe will happen in the future um I don't hope for any cure on a day-to-day -day basis because I don't think that's healthy for me I think about what I do have and the lovely sounds and smells and everything around me that I can touch, lovely fluffy pillows and fluffy blankets and gorgeous textured clothes and everything that I can experience because the world is way more than just what we see. I am blind, I am not broken and just because I'm trying to see through a quality street wrapper that doesn't work doesn't mean I'm not a queen, okay? And it doesn't mean that you're not a queen if your eyes are um, a little bit poorly or a little bit like you can't see loads through them write down in the comments. I would love to know about your condition, what you are going through and what you're dealing with in your sight loss journey right now because everyone is always gonna be at a different stage in this big crazy world of loss and we are a community for a reason. We know what we're going through. Talk to someone, find friends that are like-minded. I have and they are so amazing. They totally get me and what I'm going through. And just because we all don't have the same condition doesn't mean we can't have a bit of a natter about how it gets us down, different apps, different access issues. Um, you know, just try and have a good chat about how you're feeling all the time. Often I see quite bright lights where Pluto is. It's kind of weird. Um, and it just depends on the day whether there's scar tissue there, whether it's cleared up a bit and I can see a bit of light through, but often, uh, yeah, I'm not really getting too much info coming in through the eyeballs. It's mainly through my ears and the rest of my senses. I really hope you enjoyed my description of my eyesight in today's video and you got something out of it. Maybe you feel comfortable with chatting to someone about your condition who maybe doesn't know a lot about yours in your life because I think it's really healthy to just have that dialogue and keep tabs with yourself, what you're seeing, your changes in your vision loss. Maybe you could get a chart 
um, to constantly log what you see. I know I used to do that when I saw a bit more and it was just a way that I knew for myself, not just the doctors, um, what I was seeing so I could keep tabs on things and feel in control a bit more because I think it's really important to do that. Other than the pain, I don't really think loads about what I see. It's more just dealing with the pain and yeah, just getting on with life really because I don't need my eyeballs to be a queen these days. We can do anything that we want to um, no matter what we face and I think that's really important. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you clicking on every single one of my videos. I can't even tell you how much I appreciate it um, from the bottom of my heart. Um, I can't wait to film another video for you next week and I will see you very soon for a new one. Bye!